Hello to my wonderful listeners. One Family TV. Ola Mursana Lena Kotenke. Mbadi Molo Ikafumeni Yoko UDP Youth Wing. May Alonko Ola Mola Funding Kaka for Molo today. Kabrin President Adam Abaro was Bidi Tambila Bidi Kama Sato on in Kono Idea Moment for UDP in Kola Nyaton Koni Mori. If an amede, if indeed a idea motore. Katandi Ko President Adam Abaro. Amanya Nasila da Ananta Fintilale. Ka Ila Nyaton Ko UDP Loya Usenu Dabo. Ka Bolo Sai Kuma County and May Alonko Iola for day. But UDP in Kola Mol May Alonko Ola Mola U20. Idi amuta de me alonko idi amu jamaa vode ani me me alonko wala mutali amet ben surati afana mu mola ti me alonko adi amuta omi tungo nintole wato mbadi ngolo ana di amu nintani la mo yani hakilo la mbadi ngolo unkani ila mo yani chusola de deeply um, shocked but nonetheless not surprised by the president's um, unpatriotic, irresponsible, undemocratic, and unconstitutional rhetoric. He delivered while opening his bureau in Birikama, West Coast region, on the 27th of July, 2024. When I had the remark, I asked myself so many questions. And the answers, some of them I have myself, but some will be left to the public to be the judge of yourself. When I heard he spoke of a death of an opponent, the first that come to my mind is that um, one of my famous speaker, when he always say that corruption is a vile disease. I definitely concluded that indeed, corruption is not only a vile disease, but corruption is the mother, the father of all has get birth to. We ask ourselves now, when a sitting president is calling an opposition leader, why that opposition leader did not do only thing but duties based upon him or her to hold a sitting government accountable for transparent and accountable running of his government? While we expect an answer from the president, that sitting president, the public did not hear anything. I have to kill Usenu Dabo. I have to see Usenu Dabo being killed. I have to observe the burial of Usenu Dabo to confirm his death before I relinquish power. Is this not a threat to national security? If not, I ask my question. What is a threat to national security than this. Fellow Gambians, residents of Gambia, this question is addressed to all of you to give Gambian people, that is including yourself, the answer towards 2026. I went through, I went through to the audio, which is almost 30 minutes or more. I listened to it keenly, if not more than 10 times, but I did not hear a single message a sitting president have address that is to a national interest, or one could say is a national interest agenda the president has delivered. And I will remind you, political gatherings are an opportunity accorded to politicians to emphasize or to repeat, or if not, to give citizens the new ideas and policies, programs they have for Gambian people if they are in government or if they are already serving as leaders in the helm of affairs. Speakers has alluded to so many challenges the country is facing. That include recently the capsize of a boat that has already consumed more than 150 people. How many families are affected in that? Almost an entire family was ferries in the waters of Mauritania. Where are they from? from where the president came from, that is URR, Upper River region. Why did those family perish? Why did they choose to perish in the waters than to remain comfortably in their house, alive? Just to enjoy whatsoever thing one could enjoy when you are alive. The answer is, if you have seen somebody running away from his house, throwing himself or herself in the waters, you should know there's nothing 
chasing him, but fire, outbreak. That means that the Gambia to currently, nothing is killing our youth, but the hardship can be interpreted as a fire outbreak that is trying to throw every Gambian in the Mediterranean Sea, which has been now a graveyard to our youth. If President Barrow can spoke for almost 30 minutes without even showing solidarity, sympathy to those desperate youths who choose to die in the waters than to live in the Gambia under his leadership. This is concerning as a youth leader. This is a nightmare as a politician. This is unfortunate as a citizen. That is why we are not just doing this press conference merely for talking. But we are giving President Barrow messages. When I heard these remarks, the first thing I do, I have to send a message to HE, His Excellency, ANM Hussein Udabo, not to utter a single word in response to President Barrow's irresponsible and whatsoever brain drained he has, not for him to respond to these kind of messages. But I also assure myself, without putting him to him, that we will take responsibility of whatsoever will happen. But this country must be liberated. This country must get its independent. Not independent because of just politics, but independent economically. We don't want to see any more. The use of this country taking the irregular migration way, that is the famous back way, to die in the waters because of why the government cannot create any meaningful employment to those youths. We will not sit anymore here. And we will stand and demand, as the speakers alluded to, the debt contract that President Barrow has said he signed to see the death of Hussein Dabo and to confirm while gracing his burial that Hussein Dabo has died for him to be able to relinquish his power. We will want to see that death contract. And it is not merely we want to see it, but we will fight to see that death contract. Because why? He spoke with certainty. He spoke with confidence. He spoke with a belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to kill Hussein Dabo before him. And I tell him he is lying. He has no contract with Allah. He did not see any contract. He has never seen Allah's wisdom. He has never seen Allah's message directly. The answer is, President Barrow has a contract to assassinate a citizen. A citizen that is always standing to hold a government accountable before President Barrow's born and then birth in this country. 1996 was the year the United Democratic Party was formed. We all knew. For a head of state to stand in front of the public and lie to us, saying that whatever he did, what he did in this party, nobody has done it. Was he the founder of this party? I said, no, it's a lie. He did not found the United Democratic Party. UDP was found by decent Gambians. UDP was found by intellectuals, patriots, who love their country. They came together in an environment while President Barrow, if you told him to come out that day, he is going to not only to faint, but he could even die. Because we saw the day of Senda was arrested, President Barrow see himself under a table. If that man could tell me that he did something for this party which nobody could did, I have no answer. I have no other response but to call him a liar. I have no other, I have no other respect that I can give to a head of state. Who is that and entrusted to uphold the principle of democracy, to guide a constitution, a constitution that said that right to life is a fundamental human right. For you to come out and publicly utter the killing of an opponent, I can call you that an unfortunate liar this country has ever get bathed. And my message to the IGP, I met them just last two weeks. We have a discussion. They were talking about immoralities. They were talking about uncultural utterances in our political discourse. The answer I gave him, you have a daunting tax. Because you have a president whom you must dance to his tunes, who cannot control himself when delivering public speeches. If you want to control moralities in this country, if you want to discipline people in this country, you have to get prepared because the first person to discipline, uh, to discipline or to guide, or to calm is President Anabarro. 
but he vindicated me, thank God. He went to Brickham. He did not deliver anything to national interest. Look at the insecurity internally that we face as a country. If you talk about ordinary citizens, people could say that you can, police will tell you that you cannot protect them because they are killed at their homes. They are killed at their financial bureaus. They are killed on the streets where the police are not. But I'm referencing three innocent, hardworking, patriotic political officers were killed by an armed gun officer who no one knows up to date who the killer is. I repeat, who no one knows up to date who the killer is. So if you talk about internal, internal security, and prior to that killing, President Barrow stood in an opening of a police station built by German government. He said, the security is, is con of this country is today guaranteed than anybody, any day else. He in fact said that it is the critics that are over exaggerating these issues. But his government have done enough to secure each and every Gambian. The next week, he was told that, Mr. President, you got mistake. This country is insecure. In fact, we are telling you you're going to kill your police officers, and they killed them. How are those families going through today? What's supposed to be done as far as our government is concerned? These are the questions we should have asked ourselves. But if President Barrow or Mr. Adama Barrow could only stand and sign a dead contract to kill Mr. Usain Dabo before he relinquished power, I am calling on IEC. I am calling on IEC. Because when people tend to interpret things, they don't go critically. I go critically. I know why Adam Barrow is saying that. I know why he stood and promised and took out that he will never get or step down as the president. Because he said, he did not say that I'm not, I'm, I will continue to contest. He said, I will not relinquish power. What is the contract signed with IEC? We want to know. What is the self perpetuating contract signed with the IEC? We want to know. We already knew what transpired in 2021. But at the time, a lot of things were been said. And as our party leader first spoke before us, we couldn't do anything but to comply to his appeal. That is, he did not even want a chicken, I mean a chicken, to die because of Hussein Dabo's presidency. It was emotional. But a voter population of over 200,000 votes who voted for Hussein Dabo, they all comply with discipline, with respect to Hichi Hussein Dabo. I'm telling Hussein Dabo, move out from our politics. I have did this press conference, never consulted him. And I will do my things, I will never consult, consult him. I am elected duly by the use of this, this party. And they have trust, I have a social contract to deliver. They have to see a government that is responsible, they have to see a government that is going to protect their votes, they have to see a government that is going to, a party that is going to defend what they have decided for. And I'm ready. And I'm ready. If I say I here, I mean we are ready as youths. Nobody will take the back seat. We will die, but we will see the votes of the United Democratic Party members being protected. The votes of Gambian people who doesn't believe in the Arambaros government will be protected. We will die for this country. If Soros Sosandem could die, why not myself and others? If Soros Sosandem could sacrifice his life, why not me? So we cannot continue to, to be lambasted in an environment that we believe we don't deserve because of a mayor president who doesn't have, even have a clue about what he has to do. He talked about the plot that Usain Dabo asked him to surrender because it was legally acquired. And I can tell you, Usain Dabo came with facts because he quoted the constitution. Section 168 tells us that the president cannot directly or indirectly enrich himself on the detriment of the people. If he does, it has attracted nothing but an impeachment. That is why Binta Senghor alluded to the National Assembly. If they are responsible enough and they believe in Section 75 of the Constitution, they will definitely pass an impeachable, impeachable motion to impeach or to start the process of impeaching the President. Even though we, do, we don't have the numbers, but trust, records and integrity, ethics and principles matters. Apart from that, the majority of the Parliament decides. But what is on us? It is to do the needful. If a President can close his eyes, while declaring his assets in 2021, he said very clear, we saw it in the documents, he has nine properties in his name. 
You got an electoral act, section 5. It tells you, if anybody have more than one plot, the state cannot give you a plot to live. But President Barrow did not only stop at nine plot. He said his bank account has more than 200 million, 200 million Gambian dollars. Yet still, the same president is wanting to steal, is wanting to butcher from the scar resources of this poor nation. Why could you ask yourself, why do I vote? Why do you vote? What should we expect? Is it this? The answer is no. This is the president who stood here not long ago. He increased taxes. Today, a bottle of water that was 25 because of a so-called tax stamp has created nothing but a bottle of water to exit to 30 dollars or even 35. You call this a country? And that is why when Mayo says it's a failed state, don't think it's a political statement. It's already a failed state when Gambians don't want to stand and liberate their country from criminals like Aramabaro. This is a country where national audit reports prove that each and every life or soul in this country that the president's office, state house, has consumed more than 669 Gambian dollars. When Madi Juwate stood to hold him accountable, he said, Madi is an inciter of violence. Who is an inciter of violence? When I say corruption, it's a vile disease. Corruption is a threat to national security. This is where it is. National audit report submitted their reports. The president only stated that that report is a mayor opinion and it is bias. An institution that has been sponsored by citizens. Taxpayers money to give us a clue, a direction on how our resources is managed by the state. If a president could stand and call that institution, describe it as a mayor opinion, biasness in it, where do you think you are going? Fellow youth, the fear of Usinu Dabu. It is not his age. The fear for Usinu Dabu, I can tell you, Barrow spoke to Marabus. Barrow spoke to Marabus. They told him that if you don't kill Usinu Dabu before 2026, he's going to end your government. And if he ends your government, he's going to prosecute you. You are going to my tomb. And that's why. That is why I am telling Usi Aramabaro, if Usinu Dabu dies, if Usinu Dabu dies from here to 2026, we are going to hold you accountable. And it's better you dig your own graveyard, you bury yourself before Usainu Dabo dies. I thank you all for gracing this occasion. His Excellency Haji Ture, uh, Haji Sawane, uh, for organizing this press conference alongside Binzi Senghor. Uh, I would have liked to come here under the invitation under better circumstances. However, I have come here to speak in a very, very dark time in the history of the Gambia. That is after the comments, the insidious comments of President Adam Abaro on the passing of His Excellency Usainu Numukunda Dabo. May Allah give him a very long life. May Allah make him witness the Gambia he has fought and sacrificed for, for all these years. And inshallah, Allah will do just that. First of all, I would like to say the biggest threat to national security is the president himself, Mr. Adam Abar. Yes. This is not the first, it's not the second, it's not the third, and I'm sure this is not the last time he will make such comments that will cause disharmony and disunity between our very own people. When the national uh, dialogue was formed, I advised the party not to attend. I myself have not partaken in any of the exercises. The reason being, I have come to know the passing of Adam Abaro. He is a leader who swore to protect Gambians, to unite Gambians, to preserve peace and stability. But since he became president, we have seen him do the opposite over and over and over again. During the presidential election 2021, he used tribal politics to divide our people. Not thinking for once what will happen when those people go back into their neighborhoods. 
Our country is a mixed country. People live in intermarriages. Tribes live side by side in harmony for many generations, even before 1965. So to divide the people amongst heritage is one of the most irresponsible things a leader can do. Because if there's the stability, the same leader will have to preserve the peace. Secondly, this is the president who stood during the mayoral elections and told his supporters, you have the power, go and fight. They beat up many of our supporters. MLC, who was handcuffed in Majum Estate, and electrocuted over and over again. Tear gas was thrown into one of our campaign cars. Many of our supporters were beaten and arrested. Some even handed to the police and the police put them in cells. The same president came again in a rally at Karawan and spoke about the NARS and said UDP is a NAR party and spoke to the passing of party leader and saying he has lost network. Terrible comments you can say to somebody who was a former vice president and foreign affairs minister of our country. I will ask and beg of something from our party leader. Please never respond. Never respond to President Barrow. You have your youths. You have your students. We will fight for you from now on. You have fought enough. I think many of the speakers have spoken of many of the problems. Just down the street here in Kololi, every week they will seize tons of cocaine. Every week we have murders. Every five o'clock in the morning when you're going for Fajar players, you pass here, you will see lots of unemployed girls doing prostitution. Our youths are tired, they have lost hope. They are even running away, risking all their lives to get to Europe. Many die along the way. Many are captured and enslaved in Arab countries. Just last week, 150 youth lost their lives at sea. I did not hear a single comment from President Barrow. Now we have a drug that is destroying our community, a drug that is taken from the human bone. They exhume graves, take out bones of human beings and make this drug. Today, one in five youth in the Gambia are smoking this drug. It is killing many on a week-on-week -week basis. Many of these youths are turning into violent criminals. We have never had a word from President Barrow. Today, many of our people cannot get driver's license. There's no cash power meter, no identity cards. Gambia is a failed state. Not a word from President Adama Barrow. And when President Barrow has the platform in Birkama to address some of these issues, to allay the anxiety of the people and the youth, he chooses to talk about the death of Hussein Udab. This is the most strange and dark thing I have ever had in Gambia. Even in the darkest days, when people were disappeared, nobody ever had people talking like this in political platforms. So for me, this is not politics. It's not a joke. This is about our country and our former vice president. I will not even refer to him as a party leader, because if we do, they will say it's UDP. This is a former vice president. Even if Hussein Udabo was never a vice president, nor a minister, he's an elder person. In our culture, you respect your elders. He can be grandfather to some, great grandfather to some, and can even be a father to the president. To talk ill of him time and time again, to insult him, ridicule him, belittle him, I think it is time for people to come together and tell Adam Abaro it is enough. And I said this two months ago or three months ago, every president has their time. Even a student leader has a time. When that time comes, you have to leave. And that's why I said two terms is even too much for President Barrow. 
more than two terms. We should never allow it. It is unacceptable in the world, especially now in Africa. That's why we see all these coup d'etats. Adam Abaro should not destroy our country. He continues to destroy the small country, the smallest country on mainland Africa. We demand that he comes out, withdraws his statement, apologizes to the passing of Usain Udabo, apologizes to his family. His family has been traumatized enough. They have tried to kill him many times. They have jailed him. He has seen death in the eye. But if it's not Allah's time, you will not leave this act. Con President Barrow, you cannot cause the death of Usain Udabo. I ask of all Gambians to come together, to put aside tribal politics, disunity, divisions. We see Makisal in Senegal. He said there will not be any elections. They burned the streets, the buildings for many months. He disunited the people. Where is Makisal today? They will destroy the country and then go to exile. And then we have to pick up the pieces. And I think for President Barrow, he must learn from his friend, Makisal. Today, even on the radio, his ministers, his advisors, who were pushing him, arrest Usman Sonko, kill this person, kill that person. The same ministers today are blaming Makisal to what happened in Senegal. So President Barrow, your advisors, your ministers today will be the ones who will be blaming you tomorrow. They'll be the ones who will be laughing at you tomorrow. We have seen it with the former president. We have seen it with neighboring presidents. So do not let that fate befall you. Without further ado, I want all of us to continue to pray for our party leader. We all know he will live a very long life to see the country he has sacrificed so much for. Thank you. Wassalam. In recent time, we had we have witnessed what I mean is he should be in front of advocating for hate speech but he himself is now being the one to start hate speech in this country and misinformation. Hate speech in any form is a cross thief force that threatens to erode the foundation of democracy, compassion and unity. It sown seeds of division and discord among our communities, leading to an environment of fear and mistrust. As the youth wing of United Democratic Party, we advocate for a society built on inclusivity, inclusivity and respect. We must equally condemn any hate speech that seeks for demonic and dehumanizing and differentiate any individual or any political party or anyone that is called a citizen or non-citizen in this country. The recent president, President Barrow, has, as the leader of our nation, has a profound responsibility to model the values we hold dear values to justice, equality, and respect for all. The words of our leader carry weight. They have the power to uplift, inspire, and unify or Conversely, to incite anger, fear, and hate. It is crucial that we hold our leader accountable for their words. And this is why today we gather here to account President Barrow for his own statement to come out and apologize to the Gambian people for the statement he uttered against our hero, that is His Excellency, President Usain Barrow. a higher standard of how the president should rule and how we want our country to be governed by him. While we cherish the rights of freedom and speech, this right comes with a responsibility to speak with core and consideration. We cannot turn a blind eye to hate speech. We must be vigilant against any form of speech that will bring us division along all ethnic, religious, and ideological lines. Our, di our, diversion, our diversion is our strength, and it is, the duty of, it is our duty to celebrate it, not to weaponize it. As the President of the Republic of the Gambia, he, he used 
the freedom of speech that is given by the Constitution to every right in every democratic state to weaponize it as a political tool against our political party. Today I call upon the President to reflect on the power of his words and to choose a path to dialogue, our, to dialogue over decisions. And we want to remind the President, like months ago, months ago, he called for a political dialogue where all political parties and their leaders were present at the State House to discuss the present issues and to discuss issues that are bring, bringing disability, that are bringing discomfort and chaotic to our society. Let us foster a climate where every difference or every different able person of or will bring conflict and growth. Let us build a nation where every individual, regardless of their background, feel unsafe, will be valued in our society. I would like to call on all the CSOs and all the religious leaders that are serving the people that are the citizens to come to Gambians for uttering this irresponsible words towards our party leader, Usain Odabo. The international communities, we want to take this opportunity to call all every international and diplomat to ask President Barrow to resign. Of the National Assembly, as we are all aware today, the President has violated many rights of the Constitution of, this Gambia, of the Gambia. And now we can move a motion to impeach President Barrow. He's inciting conflict among the young people, among the citizens, among the elderly people. In 2018, President Barrow made a statement. And recently, in We want to call with for criticizing Barrow. I think and I believe you all can arrest Barrow, or you all can go to Barrow and release a statement to condemn Barrow's speech and to ask him to come to the Gambian people and apologize. <laughs> we go by the living condition of Gambians. Every citizen of this country is crying. Bag of rice is expensive. We want the president to address these issues, not to go to a gathering to be inserting conflict or hatred among each other. Yes, I cried on that day. I laughed first and I cried. You know why? I feel pity for Gambians. I feel sorry for us. I see people clap when Barrow finished talking. They are ignorant people. They are not illiterate. They are ignorant. They are unlettered people. They didn't go to school. We have lost thousands of young people across because of they are now using coups. Three days ago in Brikama, 15 young boys died of consuming coups. That was so pity. These are pressing issues that the president, we think and we believe he should address but not to come on board to be criticizing or to be throwing, to, throwing stones at a political party. Hussein Udabo. Hussein Udabo didn't owe any Gambian. We the Gambians owe Hussein Udabo. If Barrow, you cannot give him that due respect. We give him that due respect. This is the Democratic Party. Today we will send a message to you. Now Dabo is above Barrow. 
That one is above barrel. Wherever people talk about barrel, how he's ruling this country, how he is manipulating this country. I want to ask President Barrow a question. Who did Barrow sign this contract with? Who did Barrow And I want tomorrow, on Tuesday, on the 30th of July, Barrow to answer. We want to know. We definitely want to know. If you call, you, if you call yourself a leader, we too call ourselves a leader. And we demand an answer from you. We want to know. And we are telling ECOWAS, UNDP, all these international communities that in the 26th before Barrow leave office, anything that happens to Mr. Dabo, even a scratch, Barrow is responsible. And we will sue him to anywhere. <laughs> Civil service, the civil servant, are crying all over the country. Low salary increase. He promised to increase their salaries. These are issues that Barrow should address. These are issues that everyone is crying of. These are issues we expect his ministry, the communication unit, the information unit, to come out and tell the Gambian people, this and this is what the government is doing to increase your salaries. But instead, instead, we are very, very disappointed. I personally, I am disappointed with Dr. Ismail Asize. I am from Brikama. He's from Brikama. He's a, he's a son of Brikama. For the statement he uttered, say, why will Barrow apologize? Barrow will apologize. You know it yourself, but because you are insecure of your position. If you go against Barrow today, he will sack you tomorrow. This is what will happen. You will get it. If you don't believe to this country who here is sleeping in peacefully statement issued by some political parties and we hope to see the same statement being issued by the CSOs. If we call ourselves champions of advocate, let's do the advocacy in the right way. The Human Rights Commission, I believe I would have read their statement today on newspaper. Today I was in the office. 